we're asked to match each matrix with the proper description of its effect on vectors. Notice we have three by three matrices, and therefore we have transformations from R3 to R3. The first column of each transformation matrix is a transformation of the vector E sub one. The second column is a transformation of the vector E sub two. And the third column is a transformation of the vector E sub three. So we'll be describing the transformations by tracking the transformations of the vectors E sub one through E sub three, though the description would apply for any vector in R3. When looking at this graphically, the vector E sub one and its transformation will be in blue. The vector E sub two and its transformation will be in red. And vector E sub three and its transformation will be in gray. So looking at the first transformation matrix, notice how the first two columns are one half, one half, zero, which indicates a transformation of the vector E sub one is a vector one half, one half, zero, and so is a transformation of the vector E sub two. Notice how both transformations have a zero for the Z component, which means both transformations are projections onto the vector one half, one half in the XY plane. And the transformation of the vector E sub three is the vector zero, 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 or the zero vector. Let's take a look at this graphically. On the left, we see the graph of the standard basis vectors, the vectors E sub one through E sub three, where again, vector E sub one is in blue, vector E sub two is in red, and vector E sub three is in gray. The transformations of these three vectors are shown on the right. Again, the transformations of the vectors E sub one and E sub two are the vector one half, one half, zero, which is the single vector here in the XY plane, which is graphed in yellow. And the projection of the vector E sub three, the gray vector, is the zero vector, which is the point at the origin. Notice how I've also graphed all the linear combinations of the vector one half, one half, zero, just to make it easier to see, we can describe the transformation as a projection onto the line y equals x in the XY plane. This line is the line y equals x in the xy plane because it's passing through the origin in the point one half, one half. The best description for the first matrix is a, a projection onto the line y equals x in the xy plane. Looking at the next matrix, the transformation of the vector E sub one is one zero zero. The vector E sub one is not affected under this transformation. The transformation of the vector E sub two is the vector zero, negative one, zero, and the transformation of the vector E sub three is the vector zero, zero, negative one. So notice how for the vectors E sub two and E sub three, under the transformation, the ones change to negative ones. Let's take a look at this graphically. Again, we have the graph of the vectors E sub one through E sub three on the left. The transformation of the vector E sub one is still the vector E sub one. The transformation of the red vector, zero, one, zero, is the red vector on the right, which is zero, negative one, zero. And the transformation of the gray vector, the vector zero, zero, one, is the vector zero, zero, negative one, graphed here in gray. So notice how both the red and gray vectors, after the transformation, point in the opposite direction. I've extended the x-axis to make it easier to describe the transformation. The transformation is a rotation of 180 degrees about the x-axis where the purple line is the x-axis, which is option D. Looking at the next matrix, the transformation of the vector E sub one is zero, zero, negative one. The transformation of the vector E sub two is still the vector zero, one, zero, and the transformation of the vector E sub three is one, zero, zero. So notice under this transformation, the transformation of the vector E sub one is the vector E sub three, and the transformation of the vector E sub three is the vector E sub one. Let's take a look at this graphically. So again, looking at the transformations on the right, the red vector stays the same, and the blue and gray vectors change positions. So this one's a little hard to describe, but if I graph the plane x equals z, it'll be much easier to describe. So again, the, so again, the vectors along the x and z axes have changed positions, and therefore the transformation is a reflection across the plane x equals z, which we see here in yellow. The best description for the third matrix is b, the reflection across the plane x equals z. 
And now for the last matrix, the transformation of the vector E sub 1 is still the vector E sub 1. The transformation of the vector E sub 2 is 0, negative 1, 0. And the transformation of the vector E sub 3, notice, is still the vector E sub 3. Let's take a look at this graphically. So looking at the three transformations on the right, the only vector that's changed is a red vector. The transformation of the vector 0, 1, 0 is the vector 0, negative 1, 0, graphed here in red on the right. To make it easier to describe the transformation, let's graph the xz plane, or the plane y equals 0, which is graphed here in yellow. We can describe the transformation as a reflection across the plane y equals 0, or the xz plane. which is C. I hope you found this helpful.